Brooklyn, Young Papa, Dia Moore, Orlando. Up. Yeah. I could cause a ruckus, man. I hate these niggas, Uncle Ruckus. Uh-huh. You want beef? Let's grill, nigga. But you pussy, nigga. You should chill, nigga. Uh-huh. Got some niggas out Mount Vernon that I put that ass on chill, nigga. Damn. My goons in the milli shots, all up and down your block. Wow. Make that ass do the milli wop on the spot, on the spot. spot. You say you're too pop, I think your stew's block. <laughs> you just took six shots, now nigga thinking that he too pop. Uh-huh. This rap shit dangerous. Uh-huh. Rough draft, the watch dress is out and I'm back with the heat, 450 degrees, I got that heat but you sweating like heat, I leave niggas deceased, I'm talking to either, I'm talking to either, put some respect on my name, it's pronounced Mackie but ain't no McKee, come correct when addressing me, he claim me king, that's allegedly, I am not a panini and that bitch nigga will never press me, this is when the quarrels on the gram, equate to your worth as a man, bitch shit he gon' pull up in Georgia, I'm looking for light in your Uber nigga, what's the plan, is Minaj gon' be there to save you, don't let the stand shit get you in danger, what the fuck is a bar though, like my interlude, where your bars though, Missy Elliott with Scott bro, you done fucked up a whole song bro, trust me, you don't want these prize bro. This generation full of twat niggas throw seven sweets to when a block niggas put out. Hey y'all, so I'm back today on voiceover, and I'm going to give my recap of the Love & Hip Hop Miami franchise. Now, I want to start off by saying I love how this was done. I feel like they revamped the whole franchise together, Love & Hip Hop in general. I It was fresh, I liked the colors, and I like how they showed every parts of Miami, just not the glitz, not just the glitz and the glam of it all. You know, Trick Daddy took you to the hood. You know, um, it ain't it ain't everybody up here looking with their noses up and stuff. Um, and I like the diversity of the cast. And I also one of my favorites so far. I'm watching so far. I'm watching Katrina and Amara La Negra. Yes, I had to roll the R on there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm watching for them. Um, there's pro- probably a few more, but them two on the top of my off the top off the top of my head. So, I'm just going to grow in chronological order as much as I can remember and address what we can. So, they opened up with Amara, of course. And, you know, she's, she's again, one of those anomalies. You know, she's on Love and Hip Hop and can sing. <laughs> so, um, I actually do music and have music out. Um, and I like her song, Sequoia, Sequoia, or Sequoia, Soy, whatever the song is. I have it on um, title. Um, I took French, not Spanish, so it's going to take me a little bit longer to realize what the fuck I'm singing, but I still fuck with it, <laughs> um, but she started off singing with that, and you know, I want to point out that, uh, she does, um, I want to point out that I, I'm glad that she accepts her, or she is just as, um, Latina as she is African, I, I, I fucks with that all the way, because a lot of times, you know, with Dominicans, you know, they have a, a streak, and not all of them, of course, but a lot of them have, a streak with being a, a streak of being, you know, colorist, and oh, well, I'm not, I'm not black, da da da, this that, and the other, you know. But yet, in the same breath, they want to say nigga, and they want to, you know, dress like us. They want the cornrows. They want da da da, this that, and the other, you know. But when it gets to be time to be black or whatever, it's no, I'm Dominican, you know. So, and uh, all that shit, we all know. And yeah, colorism, and you know, you can't really fault anybody when they're like that. To an extent, because you, racism did a number on all of us as a country, you know, re- black people are, and and black people got to realize, too, you know, that colorist shit, it spreads everywhere. It ain't just within the black community. It's within the Asian community. Um, all the damn bleaching products they got, it's within the, they literally have a saying in like, what is it? Not, I don't think it's, uh, Dominicans have a saying, if I'm not mistaken, that is, um, the light, the lighter, the better or something, or always go lighter or something like that. My neighbor was telling me about it. She's Haitian. So that shit is deeply ingrained in people's minds. But for her to overcome that and say, no, I'm good. I'm Latina. I'm going to rock my Afro. 
which is all her hair, by the way. You know, I got this banging body, which is all hers, by the way. So, you know, um, and I love everything about me, you know. So, I fuck with her for that. She's going to go places, trust me. But they open up with her um, in the official scene. And then we go from her to, uh, let's see, I'm paraphrasing. I've only watched, like, the episode, like, twice. Let's see. We go from her to, um, you know what? If I, if I, okay, there we go. I remember that. She's talking to the little Hispanic little white girls. Um, the Latinas, uh, I, I want to, uh, maybe they're, maybe they're all Latina. At first, I thought it was Cubans, because, you know, usually the more white ones are the, the, the Spaniard looking ones, are usually the Cubans and the, um, Puerto Ricans, but nonetheless, she's speaking to them about being Latin and all types of shades and stuff, and, um, how, you know, people expect everything, one person, to, everybody look like J-Lo, basically, and I like how, you know, they're breaking those stereotypes, um, Amara is breaking those stereotypes down, so I, I'm rooting for her, I really am, mm. so they move on from there to, um, Let's see, um, fuck chronological, we just gonna keep going. Okay, so Trick Daddy and Gunplay meet up, and Gunplay wants to get him on another song. I ain't seen Gunplay in a hot minute, but it had just dawned on me when I was watching that Gunplay has one whole dread. It's one dreadlock. That is a dreadlock. It's, it's one dreadlock. It's just one. Okay, I just want everybody to notice that. And then I like I like I need him to get it like done or something like like he he's not helping with that stereotype. My friend said like it's something with these Florida niggas and they don't like to get their hair. Done. I, I I need him to I need him to get that just finished up. And if he gonna keep the edges, I'm gonna need him to do some edge control. I'm just saying like it look it look rough. Um, I'll leave your one dread alone if you can do the rest of that shit. Um. But it starts off with him, um, but from there we see him and Trick, and, you know, he asked Trick to get on the album, Trick said that's fine, and they talk about how, you know, people take Miami style, and don't give props, and I don't know any direct, like, I don't know directly who they're talking about, so I can't really comment on that part, I do know everybody's like a melting pot, we kind of all take from each other, but, um, uh, um, yeah, they go from there, now they talking about, um, Trick Daddy be talking about his shit stank, and, you know, um, Gunplay told him just stop eating meat for 30 days, and from there, I don't know how the hell we got onto there, um, uh, he was talking about his fart stank or something, and, yeah, from there, I was like, okay, so then they, they panned out in the right way, so they went from there, let's see, what else can I recall, Shay, um, Johnson, she's back, and, um, uh, she's with Pleasure P., of Pretty Ricky, who is now the Ugly Richards, I'm just saying, um, <laughs> let me stop, but, um, nonetheless, she meets up with him, so apparently she's been seeing him for two years, long this relationship, um, that car he pulled up in was fire, and it might actually be his, um, cause he the only member I seen, like, that's been, like, you know, still doing, making moves and stuff with, um, more on the company and business side. But nonetheless, you know, they get to the house and, you know, she's talking about, he, he lets it known that he's getting a group back and she ain't really feeling it. Um, and, you know, after she said two years of a long distance relationship, which I'm sure they had some personal uh, physical interaction at some point, but after she said two years, you know, if that's accurate, hey, I can't be mad at her for that thought, and I feel like everybody's trying to feel pressure to put their boy band, or their group back together in 2017, in 2018, I don't know what this is, but, um, some things just need to stay the way they are, you know, Pretty Ricky, I can't really, I don't know if that will work for them, you know, it's, it's been about 10 years, your group was called Pretty Ricky, you know, um, you was, you was the sex, you was the sex craze back in the day. And and half of y'all ain't looking so hot, so I I don't know how that's gonna work. I'm just gonna keep it real, you know. With like boys to men, or you like new edition, you know they got they had different facets in their music, you know. And they wasn't called the pretty boys or the pretty the pretty men, so you know they didn't have to worry if they aged to look like shit and then kept going, you know. I'm just saying, I'm just keeping it real. But nonetheless, um, 
he want to get the group back. She ain't really feeling that with her new body. Got her titties up from 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 down to up to the chin. <laughs> Um, which I guess she needed that, because she always had a butt, you know, and kind of equaled out, um, but nonetheless, she, um, so yeah, she's good now, or she, well, she was good, um, she, she's, and she seems to be in a stable place, so nonetheless, moving on from her, um, let's see, you got Bobby Light, that's Trina's cousin, which apparently, I thought they was just like play cousins or whatever, but nah, they really look alike, so I was like, oh, okay, that's your real cousin, but um, apparently, um, Trina and Trick, you know, they hit up the stage to, you don't know that hoe, them being the places I've been, who can spend the rack that I spend, do about five, six best friends, ah, oh, I was lit, okay, let me stop, uh -huh. but yeah, they hit the stage to do, um, nah, and, um, apparently Bobby is supposed to be on the list, and he can't get through the security, that's gotta be the most embarrassing thing ever, then he came to the event, the event is all white, and he came in a blue polka dotted, red polka dotted, green polka dotted, if I'm not mistaken, like, I guess pants, or shirt, or jumpsuit, I don't know what it was, even if it wasn't all white, I still wouldn't have wanted it, but hey, it's to each his own. Ooh. Um. Yeah, to each his own. Um, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna stay on recapping this. So, um, I'm gonna try to, if not every week, at least bi-weekly, because I am very interested in this show. I already got my, um, nickname for him. I'm sorry, it's, it's Dick and Play. Dick for obvious reasons, but Dick and Play because um he got the kid and play haircut going on. Uh or he got the kid haircut go I, I don't I don't I, I if that worked for you. But I just I couldn't stop looking. I was like, he looked like kid and play. What the fuck? Ah. So nonetheless he's a, he is a gay flamboyant he's well, that's one of the most gay hood rats I ever met in my life. God damn. I ever seen in my life. He came up on the intro with my gay flamboyant ass. I was like, oh, okay. Well, okay. So, hey, he's staying true to himself. It is what it is. But, um, him and Trina get into a light altercation in that, situ in that situation. And I guess he's feeling like he's being put on the outskirts, even though he's family. Which, I can see how he could feel that way, I guess. But, you also gotta remember this is a place of business. So, at the end of the day, you know... You being my assistant, you know, you still need to assist and do what you got to do, you know. And m somehow find a way to mess with my uh, the um, other half of my team or whatever. But, um, yeah, it ends, that scene ends and she says, you're lucky I'm not kicking your ass out. So, and um, from there on, let's see what else happens. Oh, I forgot to include Amara meets up with Young Hollywood. Why he's named that, I don't know, because I don't know who the fuck he is. Um, but nonetheless, Young Hollywood, um, whoever the fuck you are, um, Mariah Carey voice, I don't know him. <laughs> but she meets up with him, and she brings her mom to the business meeting, which is not the first time I've seen that, so I don't know why he acted like that was so alarming or whatever. You could tell his mom really wasn't feeling her. I wish they had played that scene a little bit more, because he put his hand over um, or, or on the mom's arm as they were walking into the restaurant. And, um, I, I wanted to see her reaction to that. Mm -mm. He was about to, and then they just cut to the next. I was like, damn. So, going on from there, the moment that everybody's been talking about, um, Young Hollywood and his colorist and racist comments. First off, I want to start off by saying, for him to say, um, on, I want to start off on the professionalism shit. You have a tattoo by your eyeball, sir. You are not Lil Wayne. You are not Mr. Carter. I'm going to need you not to do that. You, you, I'm going to need you not to do that. Um, you you ain't Dwayne. You're not. But nonetheless, and on top of that, you're talking about professionalism. You met with her at a restaurant. You don't have an office. You don't have a place of business. You, so we're talking about professionalism. He got all these tattoos down. So he need to be the last person talking about professionalism. I want to give Amara her props. She handled that situation very well because I would have jumped that nigga. Um... Sometimes I'll wait, and then afterwards I'll go and blow up your house or something like that. But nah, I would have jumped him. I would have jumped him. I'm sorry. Um, the crazy, and you can see the crazy in her eyes. Like, 
I, I, I'm just, I'm proud of her. I hope she called her cousins after that, or somebody. I hope she got somebody who whooped his ass. I just hope. I'm sorry, but I hope. Um, cause I will. If I ever see him, I'm so serious. Like I will burn his house down. I, 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 I went on ahead. I ended up getting my mama to watch the show with me, and I let her know, Mom, if I ever see him, you know, I, I just want you to know I'm gonna burn his house down. He attacked her from every conceivable point of being African, down to the mocking of her hand gestures. His disrespectful ass putting the the black power fist up, the um, Nutella queen comments, calling her, uh, saying that, uh, you know, she needs to tone it down and, you know, a little less Beyonce, a little more Beyonce, a little less Macy Gray and some shit like that, shit like that. And uh, Afro was cool every once in a while, but, you know, so I just, I wasn't feeling that at all, you know. Um, one of the YouTubers I watched, Lovely T, she was talking about how she can't really fault him for that. Because, you know, people, some people are raised, people are raised in that shit. And while I understand that, you knew that this was going to, he knew that this was going to be on national television. And the way he came at her, and then I see in the previews, he's going to call her ignorant later on at some point in the episode. But the way he came at her, I'm I'm not fucking with that. I'm not fucking with the way that he came at her. It was, I, I can't, you, you grow up in situations, but at the end of the day, I feel like that's the same as giving a racist a pass because they was raised in a racist household. There's just as many people who've been raised in racist households that don't end up racist as, as there is that do end up. You make the choice at the end of the day to let go of some of those vices. I understand it's hard, you know, when you, it's ingrained in your head as a, as a child, but that was just unacceptable. And you knew that was going to air on TV. I, I, I applaud Amara for walking out. Cause I would have, I would have stabbed him. I would have stabbed him. Um, yeah, I would have stabbed him. So moving on from there, um, let's see what else can um, Pleasure P and uh, Pretty Ricky came out to perform. Um, and Shay Johnson met up with them backstage. Now, of course, the conversations are cut down to five minutes, so I can't really judge what happened. But a lot of people said Shay was going like hard, and I feel like she was doing a bit much. But if you go back and watch when she goes up to security, um, and she, you know, pleasure lets her through. You know, the little fat monkey one. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, that's what he. I mean, when she said he looked like a monkey, I, I, he does. I'm sorry. Me and my neighbor got into it about that. I just, it, the truth is the truth. Um, and if I don't too much care for you, you know, I hate to refer to black people as animals, but I mean, a, a lot of the stuff that we we view as painful, it's just not that big. Like, it, it, it is what it is. But nonetheless, um, and I can just agree to disagree with some people on that. Because he do look like a monkey, I'm sorry. You know. Uh, ph phonetically. Yeah. But, um... Nonetheless, um, the one that looked pregnant, ah, that shit was funny when she said you're pregnant ass, da, 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 da. I was like, oh shit. But um, when when the um, scene was happening, when she walked in, he was like, who is this? So he kind of already disrespected her first. Now she went a bit harder than she needed to, but he, he, he did start off already looking at her like, uh, what the fuck is she doing here? Who the fuck is this? And then for him to go straight to you have, uh, where'd you get this whole bruh from the halfway house? I'm surprised she ain't charge at him. I really, I, I really am just based off of where I, what I've seen from Shay in the past on reality TV. So, um, yeah, I don't know if she should have got into it with, it went that hard with him, you know. And to an extent, I do understand what she's saying. You know, if I'm wrong, we'll figure this out at the house. But don't just let it, like, defend me. Don't just let, you know, even though it looks like she started the problem all the way. I watched it from, I watched it again, you know. And even the first time I watched it, I didn't feel she started it all the way. It takes two to argue, you know. So, um, did she go a little, was she doing a bit much? Yes, she was. But I can see where she was coming from also. Um, and he was already the hothead when they tried to meet up before and talk about getting a group together. He was trying to say he was the one who started all this shit or carried them and da 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 this that. And here's the thing, in a group effort, nobody carries anybody. Um, so, you know, to have that attitude, you know, I already could see he was a little fiery hothead to begin with. So who knows what happened, or what happened off the scenes with them. But nonetheless... Um, and for him to speak to a woman like that, um, just, nah, it wasn't acceptable. 
Um, but moving on from there, um, let's see what else can I recall. I believe that's it. After um Bobby um jumping the table. <laughs> but for real, job Bobby jumping on the table. Um oh, 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 I forgot. Um gunplay and um Damn, I can't remember the girl's name now. Keisha? Damn, is that her name? Whatever her name is, she looks like a way better version of Kiafa Vic, Mike Vic's wife. Yeah. Um yeah, but um, he, he brings his wife to lunch, um, or girl to lunch, I don't remember, I, I can't remember which one she is, but um, she got the body of a goddess, I ain't even gonna lie. Ah, if he fuck up with that bald-headed girl, I'm gonna be there to comfort you, I got you. you know? But um, yeah, he brought her to lunch, and you know, she wasn't really feeling the move to Miami, because she was worried about, you know, him falling back into his old ways. And then the fact that he sat there and said, you know, I'm going to keep my dick in my dickies at his age. I already know he about to fuck up with this girl, Tip Drill. And that girl going to stab him. That woman, he be lucky if she don't stab him. Um, she been shot in the drive-by three times. I'm going to need you to not, to not fuck with her. I'm going to need you to not do that. Because she going to kill you in your throat. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's all the scenes, though. And, um, and it ends with Bobby jumping over the table for the assistant. Now, I don't know what their relationships is like, but I know ain't nobody just going to talk to my cousin like that. But if Trina is not, you know, just so Alvin, you need to stop or whatever. The, I think that was his name. When he was talking about some, you're a bum bitch and you're beneath me and da 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 this and the other. You know, maybe Bobby really does have that much of an attitude behind the scenes. Because if Trina won't stand up for, for you and you her cousin... You know, or won't just jump to your defense. Like then, maybe you, maybe you do do the most when you're around a girl. I don't know how to gauge that situation. May I have to see it play out some more? But um, Bobby is every bit of like, I think he's taller than me, and he jumped his ass on the table. So, um, yeah, that's trained to go right there. Um, all his life he had to fight. <laughs> oh shit! But anyway. That's my recap. Um, like I said, I'm fucking with the show. I will try to do recaps every week. If not every week, at least by the weekly. I know school is about to kick back in, so I don't know how, you know, and we got some, cra I got some crazy hours, like morning classes, like 8 a.m. So, you know, it just depends, you know, if I do that, you know, get back and take my nap or whatever, then I should be ready. Maybe I will try and probably get them to y'all the next day, you know. But yeah, um, that's all I gotta say on the situation. Um, shout out to VH1 and Mona Scott. This shit was put together well. I'm fucking with it. And um, yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next recap. Bye. When I say your name, then be like, who is you? When I say your name, then be like, okay, cool. I'm like, okay, cool. This is what I do. I should do you dirty, I got dirt on you. I should do you dirty, I got dirt on you. I should do you dirty, I got dirt on you. I should do you dirty. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Fuck Armani Cole. Fuck you. Motherfucker, don't make me beat you like your mama do. I have you fucking stone, Marmaduke. Uh, reference to stone, Emma. I'm classy, Jadenda. But this bitch gon' get ripped. Kuta? I ain't playing no games. Fuck Monopoly and sorry. Then after all this shit, you giving whack ass apologies. Acting like you humble, playing like you sincere. You move like a white chick, but you ain't Holly Singh. Clear, this ain't Degrassi, but you can end up like Jimmy. I ain't spending seven minutes on you, bitch. I ain't Remy. Shout out to her, by the way, for the BET award. You bitches and take notes. Stop being a famous.